Where is everyone? Everything has gone remote and we are now stuck trying to run our businesses remotely. We are back from the pandemic, but most people don't want to be back in the office. And so the paradigm of working has changed and I'm going to help you to face this new reality from someone who is running remote team meetings well before the pandemic happened. I'm going to share with you our best tips to use Google Workspace to run high impact meetings for you and your team. The world is in a bit of a state of flux at the moment. Companies are trying to work out how to manage their team and employees have basically been unplugged from the matrix of office work and now want to be able to work hybrid and work remotely. Now, there's been many documented cases of employees basically walking off the job if their employers are not giving them remote and flexible working arrangements. And even though the large businesses like Apple and Google are trying to bring people back into the office, well, I think the employees have got it. Remote work is here to stay and flexible hybrid work is gonna become a mainstay, well, stay a mainstay of our life moving forward. Now, this sounds like a great idea for the business, but how can we make sure that we are actually productive? Well, here's some ways that we can use Google's technology that you're using inside your business to both prepare for, run great meetings, and also keep your team engaged when they're remotely. No one likes to see what we, during the pandemic, called Zoombies, which is people just sitting on a meeting, or noddies as I call them, nodding along, pretending to be listening. We wanna try as much as possible to make our meetings engaging to actually help to keep our team connected, but keep that collaboration up and keep our team engaged. Okay, so let's go through some meeting basics. And if you've been in a corporate, everyone's been in a meeting where they've yawned before. Well, here's some basics to keep your meetings nice and sharp and to hopefully avoid the yawn fest. Now, as much as possible, you wanna only invite the people who actually need to be in the meeting. That one is a given. Google's got a great little feature where you can make somebody's invitation optional, which basically lets them decide whether or not they'd like to be there. Marking somebody optional means that they can choose if they wanna be in the meeting or not. Next up is only setting meetings at a time where everyone can actually make it. Google's built-in feature of seeing each person's schedule as you build out a meeting allows you to see a time that's gonna work for everyone. And you can use the find a time feature to choose between different times they're gonna work on different schedules. I love it when everyone has set their working hours inside Google Workspace because I can automatically see which one of my colleagues have their preferred hours that match up or line up with mine. If someone leaves work a little bit early to spend time with their family or their kids, or someone's working in a different time zone, I wanna make sure I'm not encroaching on their personal space by scheduling a meeting on a time that is not convenient for them. Another one that's just good manners is to make sure there's an agenda set for the meeting. One of the things I like is with Google Calendar, not only can you set a basic meeting agenda in text, but you can also pre-attach documents to the meeting. So if there's a report or a presentation or something else that someone needs to review before they come to the meeting, they can do their homework rather than taking up time in the meeting or spending time on emails or chat messages back and forward to try and gather that data before you sit down to meet. People can also RSVP with a location included. And what that allows you to do is see where people are gonna be working from just in case that context is important. You don't wanna to have to rush into the office to have an in-person meeting if the other person you're meeting with isn't even gonna be in that day. So that makes it helpful for you to know where you can take a meeting from and where it's important for you to work from. Another good manners tip is to rotate the person inside the meeting who's making notes. Now, if you do decide to make notes in something like a Google Doc, everybody will get access to that document after the meeting if it's been shared inside the meeting call. And that's a good way to start to mark down not only the notes from the meeting, but you can also set action items in there as well. Now, if you You've got a medium size or larger team, you're probably going to be using something else for your task management like Asana or Monday or Trello. But if you're absolutely starting with the basics or maybe you're working with a customer who's outside your business using a Google Doc or a Google Spreadsheet and the People Chips feature may be a great way of delegating tasks to those who are in the meeting and agreed on follow-up actions. So let's talk more about preparing for your meeting. One of my favorite features for collaboration inside Google Workspace is using Spaces, which is effectively a feature of Google Chat. Now, Spaces allow you to have real-time communication with your colleagues, and you gotta be careful not to abuse that, not to interrupt people too much, but it's really great for preparing for a meeting. If you've got a document to review, or you wanna bring your colleague up to speed on something before you're presenting to a senior, or before you're gathering the kind of data before you wanna bring it to the meeting, well, this is a great way to keep in touch with your team before things get started. Using a space dedicated to the people who are coming to the upcoming meeting may be another way for you to chat and connect with your team in preparation. Now, during the meeting, I'm very glad that Google have finally released their emojis tool, which lets you have interactions in there as people are speaking. The raise hand feature tool is really useful if someone's speaking, you wanna jump in. These are all tools that make it a little bit more natural for you to work with your colleagues. Now, we tend to like to have our team members have their cameras on so we can have personal relationship and personal interaction with those 
those that we're meeting with, but you've also got the option to join in with chat as well. And we have an open policy of, we call it crap talk, which basically means that if someone wants to throw little comments into the chat, they're always welcome to do that part of our team culture. And we like encouraging that in the business. Of course, we like to keep our banter to lighthearted and constructive comments. One of the best features of Google Meet is the ability to record meetings. And we've got a policy where we pretty much record every single internal meeting. What that means is we always have a transcription and we always have the recording automatically saved into Google Drive, which makes it really easy to reference if somebody said something and it wasn't quite caught on the notes or someone remembered something from a year ago and they need to reference that, that all of our meetings are recorded and we can always go back to them and reference that information. I also love the ability to use the recording feature to create training. Anytime we have a new team member who's being onboarded, we will actually switch on a record button for the meeting. And that means that if they're being shown something for the first time and they want to re-review that or re-watch it, just so they can make sure that it's really sunk in, they can go straight back to the recording. And of course, all the recordings are automatically linked to the Google Calendar event that you've set for the meeting time. Now, if you've got a large team or a presentation to a large audience, you may wanna make use of some of the additional features for interaction with your crowd. You can use a poll and you know gather feedback or get answers from your customers or from anyone else inside the business. You may also choose to use the Q&A feature where people can submit questions and democratically upvote or downvote those questions so you know to answer the right one. I love using these features when I'm presenting and it allows me to make my interactions and my presentations much more engaging for the audience. It means that they feel feel like they're participating and it keeps them a lot more engaged and basically saves them from falling asleep. Last but certainly not least, my favorite feature is using the Jamboard. Now I've got a digital Jamboard set up in my office, which is Google's amazing digital whiteboard, but I also have the Jamboard app on my iPad and all of my devices that runs both in the web and on devices for our team to collaborate on. Now the Jamboard is great for brainstorming and bringing different ideas together when people are in different places. And because I've got a pen, any tablet with a stylus will allow you to have input straight into the Jamboard from your mobile device device without having to pay for an expensive installation of hardware in your office. Jamboard is great for bringing the team together for those brainstorming sessions that would normally be done on the boardroom table together in person, but perhaps need to be done remotely with our current situation. Now a pro tip for those of you who are running large presentations or maybe training sessions, you could use something like Google Forms to send a follow-up feedback request to gather data from anyone who's joined the meeting. We love doing this when we run our Google boot camps, when we introduce new customers into the basics of Google Workspace, or when we take seasoned Google Google Workspace subscribers and show them how to use everything their Google Workspace account can do that they may not have known about. I hope you've enjoyed this summary and I hope this is helpful for you and your team running better meetings inside your company. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite feature out of all of these that I've shared with you today. And if you've got any tips to share with the community, go ahead and share those too. I'll see you in the next video. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. If you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack, or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.